everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Some serious pride on the line in this contest as these two divisional rivals take the field together for the first time this season. Almost a playoff atmosphere surrounding the game between these two bitter opponents. It's the Steelers going up against the Browns. With that, let's head out to Maitland Summit Stadium where we say hello to our two broadcasters, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. We are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes that actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. The first game's out of the way. Time to buckle down for the long season ahead, and we're off in week two. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. Play fake here on first down. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And that's caught inside the 30. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A big play there. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it. Get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Now for the point after. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Here's the Steelers' kick team as they'll boot this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. this up over the 25 to the 26. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Play action. They'll throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective, 
is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. So the offense has it first and 10. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Second down of the offense needing five yards. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he fires one incomplete. Oh man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. Expecting pass. Back to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. short gain here down to the 22 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down and as a first rounder a lot of eyes on him a lot of expectations and he has to play well in his rookie year those days of coddling guys and bringing them along slowly those days are long gone when you're drafted in the first round they expect you to play right away and a community's eyes and fan base they'll be on you the entire way really it's a solid draft class from a year ago they were able to address some key weak spots on their team and fill in some holes. And they were able to identify the players they wanted early in the process. Got a little bit of luck as some guys may have fallen to them. But for the most part, knew their philosophy and stuck to it. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. And a nice gain and a, and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming. And they need eight yards on third down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And this is caught at the eighth. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. And they thought they could exploit this defense with some really quick hitters, quick action. They worked on that in practice. We just saw it there. And we saw them break it down to the fundamentals as well. Each position. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. And what a moment we have just witnessed. We have a new all-time passing touchdown leader. And how fortunate are we to be here to witness this in person, to see someone take their spot 
at the top of the list, one of the all-time great records in sports. Extra point attempt here still to come. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was fairly easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. It's a loss of two there, bringing out second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed, and that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Stays on his feet, takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. And here's a look at the starting offense. Third down now following the run. A play fake as they set up to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. Let's take it inside his own 40. time to the tailback and nothing doing he's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine a one yard gain could look like a disaster but it all depends on how the game is going is it a series of one yard gains running the ball if that's the case you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more but if it's just the occasional one yard run hey congratulations to the defense they won that one come back and get them the next time Nine yards to go. It's third down. Four down, four down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's got his man in stride complete. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now that's the type of play that will fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They're going to look to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 
A touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Here we go now. Blue lining. Blue lining. They go play action here on first down. His throw caught at about the five. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw Leopard, the blitz, Leopard. made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there's going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from it. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. And that gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Well, after last week, where he kept finding the end zone, what do you have, two touchdown runs? Yep. He's got to be just a tad frustrated here. Close, but he hasn't gotten in. Maybe they'll give him another shot. We'll see. Well, I would think so. I think. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns have taken the lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. Now the try here for the point after. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the six. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Give them 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Hang on, Andrew. Now they'll run it on the toss. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Obviously, the offense thought they had something going, but trying to go wide on a short yardage play. But how about the defense expecting something in the middle and still able to adjust and sprint to the edge and make the play? And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. 
frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect. But as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier, trying to keep him in the rhythm. They'll give it to him right up the gut. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field, and they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call tippy toes if that one was completed. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. It's been a struggle this entire game trying to move the ball on the ground. But every now and then, you find a little chink in the armor, and that type of run right there lets them know that they can't stop every single run for almost no game. On third down, he'll drop the throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's got his man on the comebacker. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll come out in the pistol. Looking to throw. Quick throw. That's complete on the inside slam. And he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. 
I like that one, partner. They go back to back with excellent gains. And really, it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised. If and no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Looking left side, and it's complete. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a deep. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their dangerous wide receiver. His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the 6. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. They get to him for a loss of four, and it brings up third down on the sack. And unless this is a quick incomplete. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. So as they take it over, we step aside. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Browns will look to keep the pressure on in the second half. The Steelers are vulnerable right now, coming off a rough game a week ago and still not really finding a way to get back on track. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Steelers heading out on their opening drive. The pass is completed into tight coverage. It ends up working for a touchdown. The Steelers is up now by seven. Browns take it at the one. He'll move off the right side on the run, and he caps off the seven-play drive with a score. That puts them up by a touchdown. Browns take it at the 24. The catch is made after a quick pass, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. The Browns up now by 14. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. 
This will be taken about the 12. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And he's back here in the struggle department in this one like he was a week ago. And, partner, I think you can pin some of this on that O-line that room to run, just not, not there. You mentioned last week that it felt like the offensive line was getting beaten to the punch by the guys across the ball. Well, it was them. pretty evident, I thought. I mean, they were off the ball fast, penetrating, getting into the offensive backfield, really spilling a lot of runs before they got started. So I thought your observation was spot on then, and you're, and you're right there again this week. Same thing is happening, not able to get started because they're not able to control the point of attack. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. They'll give it to him right up the gun. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They're trying to establish that running game, but they're really, really having trouble, aren't they? Yeah, when you're running against a really good 4-3 defense, that means you've got big guys inside who control things. Those big defensive tackles are making it very difficult to find open space. Play action. They'll throw. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker. Complete. It's a pickup of 16 there to the lead to a new set of downs. So deja vu all over again. Another good week. And sometimes maybe, because the defense doesn't look that bad, maybe this is just good offense beating good defense in his case. I like that because... We always want to point out there was a breakdown or someone made a mistake or there was an error. Sometimes it's exactly as you described it. Sometimes they just made better plays. And that's what he's been doing for the last two weeks. Someone's got to find a way to cover this guy. Otherwise, he may set some records. And they'll run him here. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner, and the tackler was there right away for a loss of yardage. They'll go to the air here on third and two. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and that will extend their lead even further. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. 
Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board, happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. They'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. A gain of six there on first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Let's go! Green, 39! Ah! They'll set up to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Here we go now. Blue line it. Blue line it. Back to throw now on first down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Here we go now. Over, over, over. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Call it a gain of three, and it'll be fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds, and they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And here are the Browns now as the offense comes back out onto the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. And we know that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. It's caught inside the 25. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Back to throw here. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. 
from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick is good. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. This will be fielded at the six. <laughs> and nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll look to throw again. He's got time in the pocket. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Third down and one. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Detroit, Detroit. They'll drop to throw. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Their already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Hey, here we go. Three, 19. They'll give it to him right up the gut. He needed a couple, but he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And this Browns defense stands tall. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. <laughs> they juked him, and a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Crashing in from the end there, not to disrupt the pass game, but to disrupt the run game. Yeah, I love the distinction, too, because the good defensive ends, they can do it all. Set the edge in the run game, make sure that no one can move it that way, and, of course, rush the passer. On that play, use the speed to get there in the run game. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Third down and five. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Now back to throw, and incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this is incomplete. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. 
And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to give a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, Walter. Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. And his throw here is incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. So he makes the grab, and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. They'll look to throw here on first down. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And it's a gain of 17 that time. And the Steelers are going to have a first down. Red zone opportunity. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Now let's go. Boom, Boom. They'll look to throw now on first down. That is caught at the seven yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And the offense moving quickly to the line. They're going to look to throw, surveying the field. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. Back to throw again. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Steelers are able to close the gap just a bit. He's got it, and the score's now 27-14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. Oh, and I think they got it. Yes, the Steelers have it. Well, that certainly makes things more interesting. You get the score, then you get the onside kick. A little uphill battle still, but a start. It's not mission accomplished, but the plan is working. They are in a great spot right now, and the best part, they put the defense right back out on the field after having already scored. Yeah, they've got the momentum here now. Here we go now. Watch it now, Marty. Marty. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Looking sideline incomplete. So second and 10 here. Gun. They'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Wide open receiver complete. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Back to throw now on first down. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. 
Well, not the position they want to be in. Still a very, very small chance here, but they almost need a miracle. Agreed. That means they've got to get it to the sidelines, get out of bounds, and preserve clock. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he comes back with one complete. Holding defense. Fresh set of downs here. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. Holding defense. Thought he may have gotten away with one there, but the ref caught him, and it's holding. throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone and it brings up second down. And on the outside they're playing press coverage. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he just chucked that one out of bounds out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And there's the touchdown that they needed. So they'll celebrate. But the guys on the sidelines, they've got to stay focused. The onside kick team, they need them to get the ball back. Yeah, part one of the equation done. Now they need to convert and get that onside kick. So with 40 seconds left, we'll see the onside kick. If they've ever needed one to go their way, it's now. And this will be recovered by the Browns' hands team, and that should just about write a finish to this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expects... Oh, man, it's caught at the six-yard line. That Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big-bodied receiver, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add six to their lead. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable. But do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you've still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the stretch, especially on defense. But that touchdown there, you've got to feel good about your chances. They'll try and throw for it. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They have a little bit of time left here, but this one not going to go their way. And this is where, in this situation for me, you just go ahead and run out the clock, shake hands, congratulations, and move on. Because now... <laughs> You're not going to make up for what's happened during the game in this last sequence. We'll see what they do here in this last sequence. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. the gun now on third down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. 
All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. A great read, and it's picked off. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Well, I know at points in this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So for the Browns, it's a win here in their home opener as they move to 2-0. And they'll get another home date next week as the Patriots will come to town. Meanwhile, for Pittsburgh, they'll drop to 0-2. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.